All right, everybody. Today's list is called the Support of Colleagues. Essentially, what this deck is, is a take on a deck that I watched Justin Larson play a long time ago. Uh, just a simple support mage deck. Um, and I'll link that video in the description below if I can remember to do it. If I don't remember to do it, please type a comment and let me know uh, that I forgot. But essentially, yeah, this deck is a take on support mage. So uh, support mage, for anyone that doesn't know, is kind of extraordinarily annoying. But it's not the type of annoying that bothers me to the point where like I feel like it's unbalanced or unfair. It takes a fair amount of setup to do. But what you really want to have happen is you want to get probably two Elixirs of Vitality on the board. You want to get a Goldbrand, a Orb of Vermina, or a Wabajack. Any of those will do. And uh, you want to have a Cauldron Keeper and a Tower Alchemist on the board. So you can just kind of pop these supports multiple times in one turn, and uh, your opponent will just have to deal with it as you start spiraling out of control, gaining four health every turn, essentially, uh, transforming a creature, stealing a card, and then increasing the damage of your gold brand. Not exponentially, but uh, additively, by two every single turn. So that's the list. Oh, and then College of Winterhold is here because it's, it's a support, and we can kind of get it to go off if we have these guys on the board. Um, but yeah, that's the list. The idea behind it is pretty simple. I will go through the cards very quickly. Elixir of Vitality, gain two health. That's uh, one of our activate supports. It's honestly way better than you would ever think that it is if you have the right gears in motion. Uh, execute, this is a card that's going to combo really well with our Cloudrest Illusionist. This is a combo that I've wanted to showcase on the channel for a while. Uh, again, it's not a combo that I found myself, but it's one that I saw in Justin Larson's original video, which I I really uh, like the way that he used this synergy. So Cloudrest Illusionist gives a creature minus four attack uh, on the turn that you play it, and then Execute destroys a creature with two power or less. So there aren't that many creatures that go above like seven power, uh, which would be the cutoff where Cloudrest Illusionist wouldn't be able to kill something. It's a fun way to use removal. Execute also is a really good option for uh, Oblivion Portals, which are kind of running rampant. Bruma Profiteer, when you summon another creature, you gain one health. This is a pretty good card. We only run two of them. I only run two of a few cards. That was an executive decision that I made. But the Bruma Profiteer just helps us gain some health and stay in the game a little bit longer. It's, uh, it's a very good card. Gaining health by playing creatures is a really cool ability. Ice Spike, deal two damage to your opponent, draw a card. Uh, the deal two damage is nice, but really what we want to be doing is drawing cards with this, and ideally we would play it with Therano so that way we can duplicate more into our deck. Draw power is really nice to have in a very control-heavy deck like this. Shrieking Harpy, I run two of them, mostly for the Prophecy. Shackle an enemy creature, it just kind of slows our opponent down. It's I always say that Shackling is kind of like a form of removal, but it's more like a form of slowing down. That way you can prepare to remove the card on the next turn or whatever. Wardcrafter, we've got two of these guys as well. These can be comboed with our Daggerfall Mages, but also just popped onto some stuff that we want to keep alive. So like maybe a Piercing Twilight we want to use as a guard, or uh, maybe a Vivek, so that way it doesn't get killed by a Territorial Viper or something like that. Um, there's a lot of options that Wardcrafter can be used for, so just having one in your deck in a Mage list is usually a pretty good idea. Daggerfall Mage. Uh, when Daggerfall Mage's ward is broken, put a Tome of Alteration into your hand. The Tome of Alteration is a 2-2 item that draws a card for you. It's 4 cost, uh, but the Tome of Alteration is really nice, again, just for the draw power, really. Uh, the 2 extra damage and 2 extra health does come in handy, though. It's really nice. Tower Alchemist. Your activated supports have unlimited uses. So, Every support that we have in this deck is an activated support. We have three Elixirs of Vitality. We have one College of Winterhold. And then we have the Wabajack, the Orb of Vermina, and Goldbrand. All of these are activated. If we have this guy on the board, we can activate them an unlimited amount of times, which is an incredible ability to have. And it's the whole reason that we run the deck, basically. Cloudrest Illusionist. We already talked about that. Don't need to discuss. Elusive Schemer. Draw a card. Again, we've got more draw power. Draw power is everything. Last gasp, shuffle a zero-cost elusive schemer into your deck. This is another way, kind of like Ice Spikes and Therana, we're basically recycling ways 
to draw cards into our deck for later. Lightning Bolt. Prophecy, deal 4 damage. This card is just really good. It works as removal for creatures. It also deals poke damage, but in a deck like this, you're not really trying to deal a whole lot of damage to your opponent's face. You're trying to just bother them and take complete control of the board. So Lightning Bolt will mostly be used here for taking out targets. Piercing Twilight. Guard. Summon. Choose a card in your opponent's discard pile. Banish all cards from your opponent's discard pile and deck with the same name as the chosen card. So Piercing Twilight's going to be really helpful for us when our opponent has something like Piercing Javelins, has something like Cast Into Time, has something like Alduin. I've discussed Piercing Twilight quite a bit. It's a very, very good card. And uh, the extra guard on there is super helpful for blocking up lanes. Iren, summon, draw a random action from your discard pile. Your actions cost one less. We have 13 actions in this deck, but all of them are things that we generally would like back. So we have our executes. Those are nice to get back, but not completely essential. Lightning bolts are really cool to get back. Uh, javelins are really cool to get back. Cast into time is really cool to get back. So any of those are completely valid options for Iren to pull from. And then if we get like Therana and then... Say we've got Thrana on board, we pull an Iren, Iren draws us one of like our casts into time, then we could play that and shuffle more casts into times into our deck. So there are plenty of ways to generate more sources of removal in this deck than just what we have here. Speaking of, cast into time, banish a creature. This is basically just a less complicated version of Piercing Twilight. It's uh it's really good. I mean, you just get rid of it from the game forever. If your opponent is, is if your opponent is doing something that you really hate to play against, Cast Into Time is your guy. Uh, cast Into Time, for people who don't know, got a very heavy nerf. When it first came out, it was basically Piercing Twilight, if I am remembering that correctly. If you had uh, like if you had Wardcrafter down and you played Cast Into Time on it, then it would remove all the other Wardcrafters from your opponent's deck. It was crazy. So they had to nerf it to just banishing a creature, and I believe they kept the cost the same, so that goes to show you just how powerful of a effect banishing really is. Um, Cauldron Keeper, guard. Summon, give your activated supports an extra use. You may activate your supports an extra time each turn. When you have a Tower Alchemist and a Cauldron Keeper on the board at the same time, shit gets crazy. You can start activating your supports twice in one turn. If you have multiple Elixirs of Vitality, say you've got every one of your Elixirs of Vitality down, you can gain... 12 health every turn which is just madness uh and your opponent can't really stop you so it's it's really fun college of winterhold uses three activate look at three random one cost actions and choose one to draw then increase the cost of cards this reveals by one so college of winterhold can really skyrocket if you have it on the board with the two aforementioned creatures they can just really buff this up and you can get some really high value actions Memory Wraith, Summon, Banish Your Opponent's Discard Pile. This is another part of our Get Rid of Our Opponent's Deck kind of game that we're running here. Uh, I could bump this down to just one Memory Wraith, but it's done pretty well so far with two, so I'd like to keep them in there for now. I think that having some higher-powered creatures in the deck is a good thing, but just two is really all that we need. If our opponent is doing some Discard Pile shenanigans, we just throw one of these down, wipes out everything that they have been working towards, so... Very fun to play with. Piercing Javelin, Prophecy, Destroy a Creature. Piercing Javelin and I have a uh, pretty rough history. I used to really hate this card when I played um, back in like 2017 or 16 when this game was in beta. I remember playing it and god, this card really irritated me. I, I didn't quite understand that Piercing Javelin is a very balanced card in like in my worldview, Piercing Javelin is like a card that hasn't needed to be touched at all because the effect is just fair. Uh, you're spending five Magicka to destroy a creature. I mean, that's a lot of time off of your turn unless you're in some sort of a ramp deck, I guess. But the value that you're getting from destroying a creature is worth about five Magicka. And that's kind of the, been the standard for removal stuff in the game. Now you have conditional stuff like Fell the Mighty because there's a little bit more that needs to go into that. Then they drop the cost down to a four. Uh, cast into Time being the same effect as Piercing Javelin essentially, just removing a creature, five cost. Feed on the other hand, 
I don't like feet at all. It rewards you for removal. But it does a little bit extra, so they bump it up to a 6 cost. So Piercing Javelin's kind of your your baseline, in my eyes, for what removal is and should be. Therana. After you play an action, shuffle three zero-cost copies of that action into your deck. Ideally, we would like to be doing this on stuff like Ice Spike. Lightning Bolt and Piercing Javelin are our main targets, just because of the, the prophecy effect on them. So if our opponent is trying to get really aggressive on us, it's always nice to have more of these stashed away in our deck somewhere. Um, Vivek. Vivek is a pretty interesting card. Exalt 3. So Vivek essentially becomes a 8-cost... 10 10 that does not allow you to lose now this effect here you can't lose the game is actually kind of a bit of a lie i think the effect should probably be changed to something like you cannot be killed by regular means or something like that you cannot lose the game by health loss something like that because if someone plays unite the houses and you have a vivek on board you will still lose because in legends you win always trumps you can't lose so fun little lesson for you there uh, i'm planning on making a video at some point with little tips like that for legends so um, let me know if you'd be interested in that in the future uh, wabajack uses three activate transform a creature into a random creature wabajack you almost always want to be using on your own creatures when i made that mono neutral unite video the wabajack came in absolute clutch for us uh, in both ways. So I used it on one of the creatures that my opponent had, and then I used it on one of my own creatures. So you can option it wherever you want. It's just that the Wabajack is such a big gamble. I mean, you could either get a uh, a Scuttler out of Wabajack, or you could get a Dwemer Colossus. So uh, highs and lows with this card. You just want to be careful. Orb of Vermina. Activate. Draw a copy of a random card from your opponent's deck. Uses three. Orb of Vermina will just allow us to kind of mess with our opponent, get some cards from them. Uh, it does take a bit of setup with the Tower Alchemist and the Cauldron Keeper, so it's not as crazy as a card like the Shadow Foot, where it just literally takes your opponent's card. It's at least it's drawing a copy, so it kind of allows you to have a little bit of fun with your opponent and see what they're playing, along with adding more cards into your deck. So if we have a Tower Alchemist and a Cauldron Keeper in the game, the Orb of Vermin is really cool because it just allows us to kind of extend the game not indefinitely, we can still deck ourselves, but it allows us to have a bunch of cards that uh, we normally wouldn't, so that way we can extend the game as long as we want to. Uh, Goldbrand. Activate. Deal two damage to a creature, then increase the damage dealt by two. Goldbrand is a really fun card, and it also functions as a source of removal for us. The deal two damage could be used on something small in the beginning, uh, and then as it kind of winds up, it gets way more useful. Even just the normal three uses, dealing two, four, and then six damage, really helpful stuff. Again, there's not too many creatures in the game that go over six health. I mean, there are a few that I've got here, like Therana and Vivek, but other than that, six damage is usually more than a reasonable amount of damage to be doing to someone. And then we have Mirak. Mirak is a 11 cost creature, 5-5, five, five, that just steals an enemy creature unconditionally that's on the field. Um, Mirak is really, really fun. I think that you can steal some really fun stuff with him. We can't do anything with like resummoning him necessarily because I don't run Journey in this list. I don't run uh, Night to Remember. I don't run Close Call. Uh, we might be able to get one of those types of things from College of Winterhold or Orb or something like that. But uh, in general, I don't run cards like that. So we'll have to be pretty picky with the card that we do wind up stealing. But yeah, that's pretty much the list. And the question that I've got for you today is, what is your favorite Elder Scrolls character? With that said, I will see you guys on the other side. All right, we're up against Victor Chigui. Victor Chigui, something like that. Um, right out the gate, this is not the starting hand that I really want. Uh, I might keep the Cauldron Keeper. Yeah, I think I will keep the Cauldron Keeper. Um, just because it's a big part of our game plan. And getting Therana right out the gate is not bad. Just kind of dependent on what our next few draws are. The Piercing Twilight's kind of cool, too. Um, Victor Chigui, the Ghost Whisperer, is on Guildsworn on a 75-card deck. 
And it's looking like we're playing against Invade, so maybe I should have kept that Execute. Uh, yeah, I'll use that to gain a little bit of extra health for now. As long as we keep this thing at 1 and we throw our Cauldron Keeper down, we'll be kind of okay. The deck does kind of have a crazy curve. There's a lot of 5-drop cards in the deck, so we just need to be a little bit... Uh, aware of that. Tower Alchemist going down now. Not really my favorite thing. He doesn't have anything for us to banish though, and if I play the Tower Alchemist, it might induce some sort of removal. He's getting to turn four, so like a Lightning Bolt isn't out of the question for this. A, uh, I mean, he might run Execute, so we could get those out of his deck. I just... Oh, okay. Uh, we actually don't run support removal in this because it's mage, and it's very hard to do that. So we'll have to deal with that for the rest of the game. Um, well, this actually does allow me to start going with the combo right out the gate, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> um, sorry if you could hear my mouse clicking really hard there. But yeah, that is... Uh, this is the combo that we want on the board, so if we could get a College of Winterhold down, that'd be pretty cool. Although it's looking like a cast into time on the Oblivion Portal might be something that we're interested in. Ooh. Dremora Adept is not a good thing to have on here. Hmm. Okay, he's down to three cards in his deck. Well, there's the Execute, so... Uh, cast that into time, and then we Execute that. And we gain four more health. And uh, then we don't do anything. And we just sit here and, and watch as he sees our game plan unravel. Top decking that uh, Oblivion Portal was really big. And that is my Piercing Twilight target. I hate that card. I was talking about removal earlier during the deck explanation. This is a card that really, really pisses me off because, in my eyes, removal should not uh, should not reward the player who's playing it. The thing about removal that keeps it balanced is that you generally don't get an upgrade or a buff or anything, and if you do get a buff, at least in the past. The, the buff is pretty non-substantial. So, like, take uh, Sanctuary Raid, for example. That card is borderline garbage. <laughs> like, it's not bad, but it's not... It's not um, really that good. That's why it's borderline garbage. Okay, we're actually getting some pretty decent stuff going on here. Uh, I think I'd like to get my college down, because there's always the chance that you can pull mute on the first one, which we didn't. But that's okay. Uh, fabricate might be fun. Play fabricate. And he hasn't scored drain yet, which is cool, because I don't like when my opponents get their health back. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, with charge. Wow. Well, how did he pull that? He pulled that from Mythic Dawn Informer. It's a pretty lucky pull. Uh, weakness. Okay, well, weakness is good. <laughs> I quite like weakness here. Uh, he's still going to gain 10 health from this, but in the long run, we don't really care. So he's at 50 health. Um, I don't know if this is someone that's running Invasion Party. Oops. But Invasion Party would definitely be a card that we need to look out for for our piercing twilight in the future so i'm not going to play one now he doesn't really have anything in his discard pile that i'm interested in uh interested in banishing that is unexpected arrival though i could get rid of that i don't like that card 
He's getting lethal on almost everything, which is kind of okay. Alrighty. Shrieking Harpy, right over there. Tome. Cloudrest Illusionist is pretty cool. Um, well, yeah, we'll kill that. Now we're up to 34. I'll take a swig of my elixir. And I can't touch my college anymore until I get something else on the board like a Tower Alchemist. Okay, glad that didn't get lethal. That would have been hard to deal with. You know what would be smart is like one copy of Dawn's Wrath. I think that would be good. Uh, well, just simply so I can... Uh, he got Rally on his Oblivion Gate. I didn't notice that. Uh, simply so I can... Ooh, Lightning Bolt. Uh, lost my train of thought. I'm, I'm really tired. I started a new job today. So, well, not a new job, but like a summer job. So, uh, I'm a little bit out of it. I apologize, guys. Um, yeah, you know what? Piercing Twilight will go over here. What I, I remembered what I was going to do, though. I was going to play Thorana. I was going to say simply because of the fact that we might get something that we want to Thorana into our deck. I was going to play her, but I kind of like this play more. I don't like him. Uh, oh, okay. Glad that he did that because we've got a few more of those in the deck anyway. All right, Piercing Javelin. Well, that's kind of the exact thing I was talking about. So we'll play Thorana. Um, I think I'm actually okay with getting rid of this because we can, ooh, get Soul Tears into our deck. That'd be cool. Uh, yeah, well, we'll Piercing Javelin this. Hit that. And he hasn't broken any of our runes yet, so... How many cards do we have left? 37. Pretty decent number of cards. My guy's got the charge and the guard and the rally and the ward. It's going to be a little bit tough to get through him, but now that we've got soul tears, I'm... Oh! <laughs> so this is the power of piercing javelin here. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to Hit this, do that, and Thorana should still live through next turn. Our opponent does have 30 health on us, but I don't really care. Um, Tower Alchemist is more valuable to me. So now we've got Soul Tears in the deck, we've got a bunch of Javelins in the deck, and we have extra Lightning Bolts in the deck. So whenever he does decide to go face, he'd better be ready for it. Okay, it might not be the most orthodox of plays, but I'm going to kill the mage. That way my Thorana stays alive for another turn, because getting more crazy actions in my deck is kind of fun. Please, no charge. It's the first one it gets. Okay. Our opponent's been high rolling his, uh, his Mundus Stone and his Oblivion Portal quite a bit, so there's a case to be made that I shouldn't have done what I just did, but... There's another javelin. Um, so I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna use it on the Oblivion Gate. Just get that out of here for now. And Cloudrest Illusionist. I'm gonna play. Break that a bit. Uh, reason being for that is that my executes in this game, I'd imagine, are going to be mostly used on his. Uh, on his Oblivion Gates that spawn in, so I don't really need the Cloud Rest Illusionists for the extra stuff. Ooh, would you look at that? Lightning Bolt. Um, I'll kill that. That's not even one of our zero-cost ones, which is good. 
because I would like to keep those, unless it doesn't show you if it's a zero cost one in that case. Okay, and there's a Solter to <laughs> probably bring Therana back. Um, so that's what I'll do. Just because that's a very top tier card. Um, ooh, I kind of want to close out of this now, but I don't think I can hit the X without... I don't think I can hit the X without something bad happening. Uh, I wanted to see what he has in his deck, though, because there was a part of me that wanted to bring back uh, Piercing Twilight to maybe get rid of some of his stuff over here, but it's not necessary. And uh, he's really been going crazy with the wards, so there's another Tower Alchemist. Uh, I think Therana just playing her down. It's okay with me. Got a lot of actions in the deck now, so kind of a high chance that we draw something that we can use with her. And if not, she's a 510, so please no ward or lethal. Jesus Christ, man. Alrighty, more javelins. <laughs> so there's the rationale of, rationale of that. Uh, Memory Wraith, yeah, he doesn't have anything that I really want to get rid of with Piercing Twilight, so we'll do that. The only problem now is that we won't be able to look back in his deck to see what he did have. He got Rally this time. And he's going to change into that, I'd imagine. Doesn't roll anything with the Mundustone, though, interestingly. Alrighty, well, our friend here has 50 cards. We have 44. Um, that's one of our two ice spikes, so I'd like to keep one for uh, if Therana ever comes back with a soul tear. Okay, and we're keeping this javelin for his portal. I really don't think that this game is completely lost. I think that... Uh, it's well within our grasp to win still. We just have a lot of extra crap with our javelins now that we need to kind of look out for. And that's... Oh, he rolled charge, but he uh, kind of forgot. So how many executes have I used? I used one. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of okay with this move. Just to show you what the combo can do. I don't want him rallying onto anything annoying, but I'd also like to get rid of this portal if I can. So it seems like our opponent is going to be chipping away at us slowly. They've lost all fear of hitting us. They seem to have some in the beginning. Uh, I am just going to hit him in the face now, and I'm going to leave this portal here because whatever he has in his hand... Uh, it wouldn't make sense not to play something at this point. Yeah, so I think we're just going to beat him down. And uh, uh, I don't remember if he had a golden initiate before. I think we're going to limit the amount of ways that he can invade. So invasion marauder, uh, I don't want that in the deck anymore. We'll see how many we pull. Figured it was a few. Yep. And every time that we do that, it's going to be dropping the card total in his deck down, so maybe he'll deck himself before we do. We also have Vivek in hand, which is pretty cool. Um, things that this card could be might be like Ice Storm, might be the Red Year, I'm not quite sure. So I'll finally kill his Oblivion Portal there. And now he's ready to play something since his portal is dead. It is a Fetcher Fly Golem with a Ring of Lordship and then a Doppelganger onto that. Okay. So I could see why he might want to do that. The thing that we're running low on here is actually uh, our supports. So unfortunately, we're not pulling any of them anymore. I have used uh, four Javelins already but I got like two or three shuffles off. So we should be at like nine to 12 javelins in the deck in total if I'm 
doing my math correctly on that, if I'm remembering that correctly. Uh, we also did shuffle some lightning bolts in, so that's why we have this here. Uh, I don't hate the idea of javelining this one. And so I think that's what I'll do. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, and then I'll lay a ward crafter down over here. So really it's just a matter of getting an elixir of vitality now. And he was running the... Uh, okay, he's got the Blast from Oblivion. Card that I also do not like. The Staff of Sparks. <laughs> okay, so now we've got Vivek as our last hope, and Solterre. Solterre could bring us back a Therana. Um, did, we didn't hit a Prophecy on every rune, did we? Seems like our opponent is annoyed with us. <laughs> They're just sitting here, waiting. Uh, the problem with, yeah, the problem with bringing Therana back is she will shuffle more lightning bolts in, and that's cool, but we really want to start seeing the elixir type cards again. We really want to see Wabajack, we really want to see Orb, we really just want to have more cards than our opponent and ways to drain health, which actually, at this point, would it be insane to bring back my custom fabricant? It would be a plus five, plus five. Might not be the most insane thing I've ever done. How much is custom fabricant? It's at four cost. Yeah, okay, here's the plan. We play Vivek over here. We exalt him. We zero cost Solterre. We bring back our custom fabricant, <laughs> the card that I didn't think I'd be bringing back. We'll throw him over here, and uh, we'll just try to sustain our life total for a little bit. Therana cannot come back from the discard pile anymore. We have run out of College of Winterhold charges. Okay, he was really hoping that he got lethal on that, but I think his luck has run out a little bit. So, I mean, he did a pretty good job keeping us at bay, but in the end, I think that we we definitely put the control into Control Mage here. And I think Victor is probably not happy with me. I know I said that already, but pretty certain that's why he's taking a long time on his turns now, is that he just wants me to, to suffer a little bit. Which is, I mean, I don't do that, but I understand. I've done it in the past. I can't lie. I got so worried for a second that I wasn't recording. <laughs> this is definitely one of those matches that it's nice to record. Uh, now we don't hit him because I don't want him having more cards than I do. So it turns out the Soul Tear that we got from College of Winterhold and the Custom Fabricant that we technically got from College of Winterhold both kind of came in real clutch moments in this game. I don't know if Victor's here anymore. <laughs> I'm starting to doubt. Might have closed the app or something. Maybe that's it. Well, I really wish that I had more to talk about right now, but we kind of showcased the deck almost perfectly. Oh, he's here. He's still here. Okay. Whoa, Shrine Guardian. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, oh, cast into time. We'll keep that for later. Unfortunately, not good enough. There's our orb. So if I play, uh, play the orb now. Kind of see what he's got going, and he quits. So uh, <laughs> he's he's a little annoyed. Um, yeah, that's kind of the 
the way that the deck is intended to be played. Uh, we got it first match. Sorry, I'm kind of sleepy, but um, the job that I work at is kind of uh, labor intensive, I guess. So uh, yeah, but anyway, that that's kind of a perfect showcase of the deck. I'll try to play a few more to see if we can get it to go off consistently, but that's more or less what we're supposed to do. The win condition, as Justin said in his own video made like years ago at this point, the win condition in this deck is just to piss your opponent off and make them leave. So <laughs> we did the thing. Okay, we're up against the Fumigator. Ooh, that's scary. They are the Abdominator as well. And the Fumigator is on a 75 card Guildsworn deck. So this will be really original to play against, I'm sure. I'm sure that the Fumigator is not on Invade, and he is in fact on some kind of very unique list that I have never seen before in my life. That has to be the case. Oh, well, maybe it is. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just an asshole, and it's like, I, it's just for no reason. I, I apologize, Fumigator. That's my bad. Unless Sarethi Sion is somehow part of your invasion plan. There's Goldbrand, which we didn't see at all in the last deck that we faced against. But that was a really good game, I think. Showcased the... Oh my god. Okay. Fumigator, I take it back. Uh, I really don't like this thing being on the board, but I don't want to overreact to it right now. The Execute could either be used for this or for the Oblivion Portal, so we'll see what the best action is. This is going very similarly to the last game. It's kind of weird. I don't know why you would run Vicious Drag in a world where you're playing red and you could just you could run Dishnikyal Archer instead. I don't quite get that. Okay, break my rune, maybe? Breaks my rune. We get a Memory Wraith, which probably not super helpful against these colors, but I always like to come prepared. And there's Barbus. Alrighty, well, definitely want to get Blast from Oblivion out of his deck. That card is evil. That card is pure evil. Uh, looks like it's not fully out of his deck, though, so he can kill us. He can kill this thing with it next turn, at least. Um, my Execute could be used now, and I wouldn't be, wouldn't be sad about it. Because I can get Goldbrand online next turn, so in all likelihood he swings with the Vicious Dreg here, or he plays Barbus and Blast from Oblivion, which we know he's got one more in his deck, unless he's just running two for some reason. But uh, he could do that, then Blast from Oblivion, then that. Huh. I think I'll save the Execute. I will apologize for taking a long time on my turn. Blades Guardian. Well, that is not what I was expecting. Definitely not anything I was prepared for. So, Goldbrand is the move, and there's the orb, which I like to see. We could get Goldbrand, Cauldron Keeper, Tower Alchemist, sometime soon. That'd be, that'd be even better. I actually don't mind Execute on the Volcanoz Mage too, because that card is also evil. And there's Merrick. Wow, what, <laughs> what is this deck? Okay, 
I always like when Merrick gets Stundar's Hammer, or when he gives it to someone. It's, it's always kind of funny, because that card, it's definitely a card that you need to build a deck around. It's not a card that you can just get randomly thrown on something, so uh, yeah, I mean, I'll take it. Uh, we do that play because uh, Lightning Bolt is conditionally removal with the more damage that it deals. It can't always kill something, so it's important to pick your battles with that. We'll execute that, and Merrick is not really a problem right now. Um, I wish I could do more on this turn, but I can't really, so we'll just kind of have to hope that that what he does next turn isn't anything too crazy. We do have the Piercing Javelin, which is nice. And Cauldron Keeper can kill... Oh, Mentor's Ring. Never mind. Nice play. Um, well, I think we kill that. That way we don't take more damage. And we'll have to... Ooh. I could Elixir, then Cauldron Keeper. That would give this 8 damage. I'll play the Cauldron Keeper over here as well. So this is uh, it's a good way to highlight the combo here. 4 health. Deal 8 damage. Oh, did I do my math wrong? I did. I did do my math wrong. Oops. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's staying in. Uh, what I really need now is a Tower Alchemist, or else I kind of lose, but that's okay. It's my own stupid fault. He also doesn't break my rune now anymore, so that's kind of a problem. Ooh. And I wish that we had some of those draw cards I was talking about earlier. This will deal 8 damage now. <laughs> uh, there's two cards I'm really worried about now, and it's this one and this one. Uh, um, hmm. Well, we're going to have to... Oh, I should have played my Schemer first. Yeah. Did I just break a rune? Did I just break this? Dude, that's there's no way. I didn't do that. I think my Legends has been lagging or something. If you guys look at the footage, it's kind of been like... When I tried to click Sorry earlier, it kind of stuttered a bit. And there's my, my favorite card. There's kind of a high chance that we draw a Lightning Bolt or a Javelin or something. It's not out of the question. Now it is. All right, Fumigator. <laughs> Good game. You were kind of on some some weird shit, I'm not going to lie. We're up against Tynathor. Tynathor. Probably Tynathor. It's supposed to sound like dinosaur. Uh, we're up against this guy, whatever his name is, however you pronounce it. They're the Dragonborn. They are on a 75-card Guild Sworn deck. Hold up! Wait a minute! Something ain't right! This, this is the third 75-card Guild Sworn deck I've gone up against in a row. So we'll see if... Uh, I guess we'll see if it's Invade, like it has been the past two times. Third game against Invade. Uh, yeah. Pretty cool. Up against the Nord Guest. Uh, they're on Tribunal. They're the Defiant. I'm expecting to play against something that I don't like. They're on a 100 card deck. Pretty cool. Uh, I'll keep all this stuff. I don't know why. It's just calling my name. Things to expect against Tribunal are uh, 
it's probably a control matchup uh, or dragons. <laughs> Gotta always assume that they might be playing dragons. This person, interestingly, though, has a Black Marsh themed background, so maybe there's some sort of ramp deck with Histgrove and uh, Spine of Elder's Blood and Tree Minder and all, all that fun stuff. Immediately play my mage into the field lane. And he, or she, is going to get mummified. Excuse me. Tower Alchemist and two Cauldron Keepers in hand. So now we just need to find one of our seven supports. Pretty decent chance we draw at least something. Okay, and there's the Tree Miter. So there are no Argonians that I can think of in willpower. So it's probably not like a tribal... Argonian type thing. Uh, he's going to exalt something next turn and awaken this guy, so we'll just have to be aware of that. Click that. Don't quite want to play my Tower Alchemist yet. Alright. Well, there goes one of our guys. Um, yeah, this is definitely very heavy on the control aspect. Jesus. Okay. I think we'll play... The Tower Alchemist probably doesn't stay around. But I'd like to build up our health total now, rather than later. Yeah, that's about what I assumed. I spike. There's Mirak. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm a little bit out of it today. Probably shouldn't be recording, but I want to get something out for you. Um, but yeah, so that's that. That's that turn that we just had. Echo of Akatosh. I think I'll Piercing Javelin that. I want to keep my cast into time for something truly, truly degenerate. I'm just killing my Cauldron Keeper now because I have nothing out that can really do much to it. And he is going to get rid of my Javelins. Okay, or my Cauldron Keepers. It's just going to be a dick. <laughs> Ruin my whole combo. That's fine. I get it. Praetorian Commander. I'm not sure what this guy's doing. This might be Singleton or something. If it is Singleton, if that's what it turns out to be, uh, I'm not upset with what he's done so far. But he's also got 100 cards, so it's hard to tell what is and is not. And I am going to Mirak her. Who done it? Man, he played that for seven Magicka. Okay, well, we'll take her. Pretty beneficial for my deck. Okay, so I, I can't really tell if he's on dragons or if he's just got a crazy tribunal deck. It's it's unclear to me. Um, one way to find out would be to play Piercing Twilight. 
I think we'll play it on that because I do not want to see. Oh, I. <laughs> Oops. Well, we'll play it on Who Done It then. Yeah. So this is Singleton. So I'm gonna beat him up because Singleton's not particularly strong most of the time. Here's Lydia. Don't like that we're seeing Lydia. Or this guy. Don't like that. Um, okay, she's got 11 health. Easiest way for me to do this would be... Like this. All right, that one was a little bit simpler once we figured out what he was doing, but still, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's been kind of a, a draining couple of matches. I'll play one more, I think, and then we'll we'll give it a, a final assessment. That first match was really good, so I'm not upset about having played this deck it's just the invade matchups three games in a row um, playing the exact same deck it's a little sad we're up against a wood elf guest now and i'll keep that hand it's okay uh yeah we got a good thing going. My friend would like to say hello. Preparations for dismissal. Bad play in the center. Okay, we'll kind of Cloud Rest Illusionist this thing away. One of the main things with this deck is board control, and that's kind of how we won the last match, is I just had a bunch of stuff on the board that he couldn't really deal with. So uh, board control has gotten less and less important as Legends has gone on, which is why uh, Support Mage is kind of one of these decks that I don't really see anyone play anymore. But... Uh, it was definitely around back in the day. It's just not as viable these days. Nice. I, yeah, I know they're here. It's just kind of annoying. <laughs> I don't know why you would... I don't know why you would do that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hope that he's not running any support removal. Um, there shouldn't... No, Shadowfin Priest. What am I thinking? Um... Yeah, but I'm going to play Orb of Vermina anyway. See if we can get this going. Deadly Draugr. Okay. Wow. It's a big guy. Um... I'd like to have Therana on the board when I play Lightning Bolt, but we'll just play it. Click our orb. We got a Shornhelm champion. And yeah, I think we'll just hold here. This is looking like it's possible to actually get the combo going in this one, which will be nice.
And there's his Shornholm champion. There's our Vivek, too, which came in handy pretty heavily in our first game. Uh, yeah, I'll play Therana. I'll play Ice Spike. I like that combo quite a bit. Gain some health. We will pop one of his runes, unfortunately. Uh, so that's not super cool. But if all goes correctly, if he doesn't mummify me or something, I can, or silence me, I can piercing javelin this and then shuffle more into the deck so we could get like a real thing going on. I'd like to get the Tower Alchemist down next turn as well. That way we can keep our orb here. Okay. Again, you can mm. Well, that's kind of an important card to get out of the way, but Gardener's Harvest. Uh, I think we do need to kill this and shuffle more copies in. That's a bit more important here. And, uh, yeah, here's the deal uh, with what's going on right now. He's on some kind of item deck. And item decks, I've said multiple times, are very weak in this game, usually, because it takes a long time to get your creatures on the board and set them up. But the problem here that we're facing is that we are giving him a lot of time by simply ending our turn and letting him play. So I think I'm going to hit him and just try to get the win. Stolen Pants, very funny card. There's his Flesh Golem. Probably throws some item on there that makes it very hard to kill. But we should have this one kind of in the bag. Yeah, then he's just going to leave. So that's another one down, at least. It's a win that we got. Uh, kind of a, a strange match. I, I feel like I'm going to have to do a lot of editing on this video. Uh, three actions right out the gate, not necessarily what we're trying to go for. You know what, if we can draw one of our supports, uh, this hand is not bad. Play the Profiteer. Tiny Dragon, the bane of my existence. Three Tower Alchemists in the first four turns. And a Cauldron Keeper, but nothing really to play it on. You know, I don't like Tiny Dragon so much, I'm going to Piercing Javelin it, or Piercing Twilight it, because, oh wow, he only had one. Unless there's two in his hand. For some reason. Okay, Edict is a much better Twilight target. Uh, let's see. One. Two. Okay, that's strange that you would just run one tiny dragon in your deck. I think that's strange anyway. Okay, 
cast at the time. Um, yeah, I never see anyone play that card, but it is a very solid card. And we can pull our cast into time back with Irem next turn. Night Shadow. Pretty cool. I think Goldbrand might be a little bit cooler here. He is in these colors, but we did get rid of his Edicts, so maybe he's not running Dishnik Yal or Shadow Fen to get rid of this. Because if we can set this up, it's really very oppressive. I think we'll deal our damage over there first. Then yeah, just Cauldron Keeper, Tower Alchemist. I mean, it's a crazy combo. Piercing Javelin. How many have I used? None. Sure. Bringing back a Javelin or a Cast into Time is fine. There's a Call Dragon. So I wish that I'd not gotten rid of his Tiny Dragon, but that's okay. Uh, Irene will pull one of them back and she will discount it, so we'll be able to play it. We'll just kill that. I could have taken that time to set up the Tower Alchemist Cauldron Keeper combo, but yeah, I feel like it's fine to kind of use it on here. Plus, we can Elixir of Vitality as well. And there's the Wabajack. So, Tower Alchemist and Cauldron Keeper coming up. Oh, I should have played the Elixir first, but it doesn't really matter. One, two, three, four. If he does not have support removal, he is in for some trouble. Wulamnir. He can kill both of them. Well, that was fun while it lasted. <laughs> fun for the whole one time we got to do it. Uh, yeah. I'll steal Mulamnir, I guess. Click myself some more health. Our gold brand is at eight. So there's the red here. I'll play the Wabajack and Elusive Schemer and Daggerfall Mage. So he's already used his board wipe. Cool. Cool beans. Swift Wing Dragon. It's not going to break a rune, unfortunately. Uh, we can kill that with our Execute combo, which I think the Cloudrest Illusionist right now is kind of pointing me towards. Execute that. I think Tower Alchemist like this is fine. Ooh, I almost wabajacked my Alchemist. Silence and deal one damage. That would have been nice earlier, but it's fine. So now our gold brand is at 10. And he might not have an option, an answer for it. The Venom Tongue. I think he just killed the wrong target, if you ask me. Orthol Execution or two is not super great for him. Uh, well, I'll transform that. Ooh, Withered Hand Cultist. That's kind of cool. Um, Tome. Did I use an Ice Spike already? I did not. And you know what? I'm just going to hold on to it because I don't need it. Ooh, Blood Magic. That's interesting. He could pull my Mirak if he got raised dead. Yeah. It's kind of the only thing that I'd be worried about. I'd like to get another Cauldron Keeper. That would really be clutch here. 
but he is kind of going to allow me to kill this with no remorse. Kill that. Ice spike. Take a few drinks. Um, yeah, I don't really feel super comfortable. I shouldn't have played that over there. I don't really feel super comfortable transforming anything with Rabbit Jack. Actually, he's going to... Yeah, we'll do that. He's going to kill that regardless. Now he can't because it's Astrid, so... Cool. Because I think... Yeah, I think he was just going to sacrifice that no matter what happened. On your charge, Nade. And that's... Drive mad. Okay. Please be a gargoyle or a shackle. It's also raised dead. Oh. Again, not too bad. Not too bad at all. There's our orb. So this is going to deal 14 damage. Uh, goodbye. We'll hit him like that. Throw this over here to protect my tower alchemist. Throw the tome on the alchemist. Do that. Taggerfall mage. Transform this one into a... Oh, same guy. Uh, silence and deal one damage. That's not really important for any of these, but... Sure, I'll get rid of the cover on that one. So that one does die. And our creatures definitely getting thinner in our deck. I didn't even read this guy's name off. It's Comet 198. I'm going to take an educated guess and say that he was on a 100 card deck because he's at 78 and I'm at 25. Cauldron Keeper would really be helpful here. We have another Tower Alchemist. It doesn't really matter. There's an Execute. Um, yeah. Well. Uh, this needs to go. In fact, I shouldn't have even hit that. Um, that was just poor... Poor Legends playing. Lay down my orb here. So I don't need the Tower Alchemist as of yet. So we'll just establish Orb. Pull out a Piercing Javelin. That should be pretty useful for later on. Um, and then I'll transform my Daggerfall Mage. Looks like we got a Summon Effect. Uh, I actually don't want to use that at all. I don't want Tower Alchemist to have Guard. Because if I play him in the Shadow Lane then we might want to be hiding him, and if he has guard, that's not going to work. Ooh, Wildfire Dragon. That was the best thing that he could think to pull out of his deck, though. Oh, I kind of understand why. Um, well, say goodbye to that. I'll draw a card. Get Dragon Aspect, which might help us with something. I don't know. Alchemist has to go down next turn, though. He's out of Kalgranteed. He might be Singleton. No, because that's a second call dragon, but we have yet to see a repeat other than Raise Dead, which is interesting. Okay, Cauldron Keeper, now is your time to show up. All right. Well, um... I think it has to be double javelin here. Yeah, I'm not happy about it, but I think it does have to be, in fact, double javelin. So we'll do that. Gain a little bit extra health. And that's all of our piercing javelins down. One cast into time. Still got two extra lightning bolts in the deck, but not happy about it. Um, Piercing Javelin definitely goes on the the final, or Piercing Twilight, not Javelin. Definitely goes on the final Call Dragon. I'm hoping he doesn't have it in his hand, just from the way that he was playing. 
So we'll get rid of those. One, two, three, cool. Tower Alchemist here. Pop something out of the orb. It's a Hist Grove. Um, maybe that'll come up later, but for now, we're just going to keep it as is. That card's kind of cool. We'll draw something. That's another Lightning Bolt. We are down to 20 cards in our deck. So this guy will outlast us, no matter what we do. But I'm glad that we got the Call Dragon out of his hand. And now it might just be appropriate to, yeah, it might just be appropriate to start swinging because he's pulling up on stuff like this. Cast into time is kind of cool. Uh, was that my, it was not my final Tower Alchemist. Oh, yes, it was because he stole my other one. So that was all my Tower Alchemists. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have a bit of a problem here. <laughs> I could drag an aspect and break a few runes, right? Break one rune, but that doesn't feel appropriate here. So we got eight damage from hand, um, two executes that will likely get no value, and a cast into time. I think I will gold brand that for the final charge. I'll lay this hist grove down just for the funsies. And uh, yeah, I'll pull another card with the orb. Okay, so we got two dragon aspects now, which could potentially really help for some removal, actually. Now that we have two. Dark Seducer. That feels like a great target for Shrieking Harpy, actually. We'll swing first. Oh, should have played it over in the field lane. I was thinking that when I threw it down. Uh... Yeah. Well, I, I think I still will, actually. We do that, and we get eight extra damage with Lightning Bolt, so yeah, I think that that was my final piece of removal, right? Yeah? So I have uh, two Lightning Bolts and these Dragon Aspects, and that's about it. If Mute is the best thing that he can come up with... Ooh... Ooh, can't play anything with those, though, so I think that's a win for us. It's pretty cool. Good game. Let's see what he gets. Blind Moth Priest. All right, well, that was another kind of long, grindy game, but it was pretty good in the end. I think that uh, whenever the combo pops off, it's very hard to stop. Alright, I know that you guys have been liking the longer videos recently, but I am going to have to call it here. Um, I, I've, I've actually been working on kind of a special video for you guys. Um, some of you might like it. I don't know how everyone will feel about it, but I, I'm kind of proud of it so far. It's going to be taking me quite a while to do. I was working on it over the weekend and uh, didn't quite get it where I wanted it to be in a lot of spots, so the editing is kind of intense on there, but... Um, I've been working on that video quite a bit, and I know that you guys like the longer videos, but I'm going to have to call it here because I am just kind of dead tired from work. I can hear my voice kind of uh, fading a little bit. It's it's a little bit like it hurts when I talk a little bit. So um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the videos that I wind up putting in here. I'm not exactly sure if I'll show you uh, every match because I went up against three Guild Sworn invaders in a row, and it really wasn't that interesting to watch at a certain point it was just like by the time the third one showed up it was like okay my question again just a reminder at the end was uh what is your favorite elder scrolls character i think that i think that mine might be oh god that's a tough one uh i really like martin septum as a character i really like boris from oblivion a lot of oblivion characters are, are like my favorites um the gray fox obviously he's who i built kind of my whole profile around Ember Daryloth was the person who stole the cowl from Nocturnal in the first place, so that's where I got my name from. Um, Skyrim, I, I like Brynjolf, I guess. He's pretty cool. I like Esbern. Uh, but I could talk about this for hours. Anyway, I think that I'm going to call it there, and I uh, wish you guys a happy work week. So I'll talk to you guys in the comments below, and on the comments on other videos should you choose to 
rewatch some. <laughs> Not that I'm trying to force you to, but I I do get a comment or two every once in a while on the older videos, and I, I always like uh, responding and keeping up with you guys. So, yeah, uh, with that said, thank you, and I will talk to you later.